respect for myself I don't do it for my health, man I do it for the belt, man I do it to the depth, to the roof Get me 100 degrees, drop the roof So the coop don't Hey, what's going on, Ant Keepers? Welcome back to another episode of My Antics Today we're going to be talking about some of the coolest species we have here in the United States. We're going to be looking into honeypot ants, trap jaws, and we're going to look a little bit into atta, which are leaf cutter ants in general. We actually have a few different kinds of leaf cutter ants, but for today we're going to stick to the biggest and the baddest we have to offer. Let's get into the mix. Before we continue with this video, I do briefly want to bring up turtle ants. Turtle ants are known to be the rarest species in the United States. Hundreds of ant keepers go out looking for this species, and some do find a couple workers here or there, but I personally don't know anybody who's had success finding a queen, or a nuptial flight for that matter. Turtle ants can be found on the east coast of the United States, around Florida, or even upwards towards Georgia. If you live in Florida or Georgia, and you have some kind of a grassland or swampland around your area, I would go for a walk every once in a while and see if you can't be the lucky person to say they found a turtle ant queen. Starting off our list today are the magical, the majestic Navajo honey pot queens. There are known to be 34 different species of honey pot ants, globally known and they all share the ability to store large amounts of nutritious liquid, especially the larger workers that are known as repletes. During the rainy seasons, the honeypot ants' repletes are fed so much, they swell up and become living underground refrigerators or storage for their food. They can become so large, it is impossible for them to leave the nest, let alone move on their own. They store the food for their whole colony, so when the dry season comes around, they have extra food to go around. Some species of honeypot queens and colonies have been known to attack their same species in their local area. They'll kill the queen and drag the repletes and workers back to their colonies to become part of their own. Here we have another honeypot queen. A little bit bigger than the Navajos, this queen is scientifically known as Mexicanus. Mexicanus, like Navajos, do have balloon-like repletes and can be generally found in the same location around the United States. Unlike Navajos, which typically dig five to six feet underground, Mexicanus are known to go 6 to 8 feet underground. I guess a little difference in size does go a long way when you're a tunneling expert. Next up on our list of epicness, a beautiful trap jaw queen. Or scientifically known as Odontomachus brunus. Trap jaw queens are an amazing species and one of my favorite hunting predators. With their large jaws that can open at 180 degrees, they can snap them shut at will or when something touches their sensory hairs on the inside of them. Trap jaws brood are magnificent in their own sense. Instead of a smooth pupil like a Campanatus would uh, lay, they have little spikes that grab on the materials, which they in turn use to build their cocoons when the time comes. Trap jaw queens are a large species, which means they're slow moving forward into a mature colony, but it's well worth the wait when you have trap jaw workers running around attacking the prey you put in there for food. 
This trap jaw queen has been in my care for a couple months now, and I've watched her from a pile of eggs all the way to the cocoons and mature larvae that you see here. Like honey pots, trap jaw queens are one of the hardest species to take care of in captivity. And I would only recommend adding these to your collection if you're an experienced ant keeper with years under your belt and a strong community to give you support when you need it. Lastly, on our list of epicness, we have an amazing species, which are not only farmers and pharmacists, but they may be helping scientists create an even cleaner burning biofuel for our cars for the future. I'm talking, of course, about the biggest leafcutter species we have in the States. That species, you ask, is the Atta leaf cutting ants. You see, when a queen leaves her original nest, she takes a small piece of fungus with her. After she mates to start laying brood, she keeps the fungus with her at all times, and eventually the workers, her first nanitics, start to care for it and the brood. When she gets to around 20 to 30 workers, she starts sending out soldiers to collect pieces of leaves and grass and bush material to chew up into a paste and add to the fungus ball. The fungus ends up consuming the paste, which turns into more food for the colony. Now, when a colony gets big, three to five million worker big, there are long lines, miles across, of Atta soldiers going from tree to tree, taking as much leaf material as they can and adding it to their now blooming fungus gardens inside their walls. A Atta colony could eat a full adult tree in one single day, and that's just remarkable in itself. They have an antibacterial fungus on their backs that not only makes sure their fungus gardens don't get sick, but scientists are using for antibiotics for humans like you and me. Lastly, they have giant majors with huge jaws for defending the nest and making sure that none of the workers get lazy. In my eyes, it's to the extreme when it comes to the cool meter. And I think it's definitely a challenge, but could possibly be done if you're an experienced ant keeper with a lot of time and space on your hands. So how exactly do you care for Anna's trap jaws and honey pots? Well, you can start with the temperature and humidity they need to succeed. And a good substrate is also recommended, whether it's dirt, rocks and sand, or even wood chips. Making sure they have a natural feel to their nest and environment is a major plus in their success. Anna specifically need to make sure that their fungus is at optimum growth level at all times, especially when the colony gets up in numbers. You have to do a lot of research and do a lot of tweaking with your setups, whether you're using a heat source from the bottom or a heat lamp up top, or even both when it comes to, right down to it. Making sure that you understand what you're looking for and what they need is the first major step to watching them bloom into a mature colony. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up this video of some of the most epic species we have in the United States. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and stay tuned for the next video. It's been said before, and I'll say it again, no matter where or when, happy ant keeping.